Coral reefs are some of the most extraordinary and beautiful things on our planet, and they have been around for millions of years. Today I'll be talking about ancient coral reefs of the Paleozoic era, around 540 to 250 million years ago. In this era, coral reefs first appeared in the Cambrian period, but they seem to have completely vanished at the end of the Paleozoic, during the Permian-Triassic mass extinction. They later reappeared, giving rise to the stunning coral reefs we still admire today. Together with animations by my collaborators Paleobiome and Bringing Fossils to Life, we will try to get a glimpse into what Paleozoic coral reefs might have looked like. This video was inspired by an unexpected fossil find of long extinct corals during a field ecology excursion here in the Netherlands, but I'll show these later in the video where we know a little bit more about corals. Let's start by defining what reefs and corals are. Corals are marine invertebrates within the class Anthozoa, that is part of a larger phylum Cnidaria. This phylum also includes jellyfish, sea anemones and hydroids. They are composed of individual polyps, which are small soft-bodied organisms with a central mouth surrounded by tentacles. All living reef-building corals today are known as Cleractinians, or stony corals. Their skeleton is made of calcium carbonate, and keeps growing upwards and outwards throughout their lives, but they only occupy the upper part of the skeletal structure. This is how corals together with other organisms such as sponges and algae contribute to the formation and extension of coral reefs. Some corals form large colonies and others are solitary. Many corals have symbiotic relationships with photosynthetic algae. These algae live within the tissue of corals and can, just like plants, harvest energy from the sun. However, some corals, particularly those in deeper and cooler waters, lack symbiotic algae and rely entirely on capturing prey as energy source. Before Sclerotinians, different types of corals lived on ancient reefs. These were mainly tabulate and rugose corals, which are now extinct. In this video I'll focus on these ancient reef builders and what their existence tells us about the history of coral reefs. Let's start at the beginning. The earliest structures made of calcium carbonate in the sea date back to 3.5 billion years ago and are considered the first signs of life. These structures known as stromatolites are believed to have formed due to the deposition of calcium carbonate by cyanobacteria. While stromatolites can be seen as proto-reefs, diverse reefs began to emerge in the Cambrian period around 540 to 490 million years ago. These reefs were primarily formed by reef builders, such as bryozoans and sponges. The first corals evolved during the Ordovician period, and by the late Ordovician corals were firmly established in many reef ecosystems. The most dominant of these corals were the tabulate and the rugose corals, which brings me back to the fossil find that got me into this subject. During a field ecology excursion at the Markerwadde in the Netherlands, a classmate of mine found a little fossil and gave it to me. Back home, I cleaned it and examined it under the microscope, revealing its beautiful little structures. At the time, I didn't know what they could be. However, after taking a paleontology course, I discovered that it might be a rugose coral, a possibility confirmed by my professor, who also identified a small tabulate coral from the genus Allopora encrusted on it. So, this little rock contains the two main classes of Paleozoic corals, which existed around 490 to 250 million years ago. So let's start with the rugose corals. Rugose corals have an exoskeleton that consists of vertical elements called septa. These septa radiated outwards from a central column called the columella, creating a cone-like shape. The upward growth leaves behind a trail of flat horizontal skeletal plates called tabulae. Inside the exoskeleton, the coral soft tissues were organized around a central body cavity known as the calyx. Rugose corals also had tentacles surrounding the calyx opening, which they used for feeding and sensing the environment. While most rugose corals lived as solitary individuals anchored to the seafloor, some species were colonial. Like rugose corals, tabulate corals also leave behind a trail of tabulae as they grow upwards. However, in the case of tabulate corals, these trailing structures have a distinctive horizontal box-like form known as tabulae. In contrast to rugose and modern sclerotinian corals, most tabulate coral species do not have septa. Some tabulate corals encrust other corals, such as the Allopora on the fossil from the Markerwadde. So now we know what the most commonly found Paleozoic corals were like. Let's take a closer look at their evolutionary journey. Here you see a graph illustrating their evolutionary trajectory. The vertical length of each group represents the time span of which rugose and tabulate corals existed, while the thickness indicates their relative abundance and diversity. Notice the peak in diversity in the middle Devonian. During this period the corals thrived in the so-called mega-reefs. 
These extensive and large-scale systems were distributed across all tropical regions, but the diversity collapsed during the late Devonian mass extinction event. It is not entirely clear what caused this event, but it is believed that the decrease in temperature and oxygen depleted seas were important factors that contributed to the biodiversity losses and the global demise of many marine groups. During the Carboniferous period, smaller reef mounds began to establish again. However, both tabulate and rugose corals went extinct during the most devastating of all mass extinctions, the Permian-Triassic mass extinction. No fossilized corals have been found in the gap of 7 to 8 million years that followed. It was only after this period that the Sclerotinian corals began to appear. Their origin is not entirely clear, and they are likely not descendants of the tabulate or rugose corals. So rugose and tabulate corals are not considered direct ancestors of modern Sclerotinian corals. However, despite these taxonomic differences, the shape of these corals is quite similar to those of modern corals, and this indicates that their function and habitat could also have been similar. Let's take a closer look at what scientists have unraveled about their function and habitat. Many paleontologists suggest that some tabulate and rugose corals had photosymbiotic relationships with algae, just like some of the modern Sclerotinian corals have. This hypothesis is supported by various studies, for example, a study on carbon and oxygen isotope signatures in tabulate corals found that they align with the signatures found in the exoskeletons of modern sclerotinian corals. These signatures are linked to photosynthesis, and this provides evidence that tabulate corals likely had photosymbionts. Other studies have focused on what type of habitat paleozoic corals could have had. In modern reefs, the growth forms of corals tend to vary with the depth and light levels. This is because these shapes maximize the surface area available for the photosymbionts to harvest the energy from the light. Branching coral species are most common in shallow, well-lit areas, while massive corals prevail in intermediate depths, and the platy, flattened corals are most characteristic in deeper, low-light zones. If Paleozoic corals had photosymbionts, then it is likely that similar principles applied in the ancient coral reefs of the Paleozoic era. Thanks for watching and special thanks to Paleobiome and Bringing Fossils to Life for providing beautiful animations of Paleozoic coral reefs.